It's Fred here, aka the Aviation Enthusiast, with another video on Airway Sim. And today's fourth installment will take you through uh, two main topics, really, and they're both linked: is a cargo and a city based amount and how that kind of works. So, let me uh, take you through it. So, I'm using again uh, the same speed, uh, the same game world as before, which is the speed recovery game world. You see, my numbers are, are still going up versus last time i've made a few changes in fact that i've actually gone for an additional fleet type and i'll show you in a minute and um i'll talk about cargo and you know what's what's important about cargo well first of all cargo is very profitable is more profitable in many airports um than than we talk about passengers so that's the reason why i am focusing predominantly on cargo and what i wanted to make this tutorial um, there's three types of cargo, so you'll have uh, light cargo, standard cargo, and heavy cargo. And for the purpose of this video, when I talk about cargo, for me it's when I talk about just purely having freighter aircraft, so not uh, passenger aircraft that just also t tend to carry some cargo, which is only on the light or the, the standard cargo, depending on the size of the aircraft. So this is really focusing on cargo only aircraft or combi aircraft that are very large that can also carry the heavy cargo um, my rule of thumb is that I only you know get cargo airplanes you know when they fly heavy cargo as well so I do not bother with aircraft that only fly light or standard cargo because those I tend to cover with passenger aircraft if there is demand if there's no passenger demand and only a light or standard cargo I tend to not fly those routes uh, so I pr predominantly focus on, on the big routes where there's heavy cargo. So f first of all, to, to know with cargo, what's important is, especially heavy cargo, you will only start to see your uh, your plane become profitable when the route image is at 80. So route image is very important with cargo. That's why as a strategy, it's, it's not advised to start up an airline just with focusing on cargo, but start with some passengers and eventually move on to cargo when you've established some demand. Uh, when you've established some root image now first of all is to understand is this is working on the um, city uh, based demand profile so different than the passenger uh, profile at the moment so you got to understand how this um, CBD works so to give you a quick uh, introduction to city based demand is basically you're looking at an area of one city and you want to fly to another city and that, uh, that city also has an area. What is the demand be between those two cities? Um, so if we go, I am in New York, just to give you an example. To see what area is being captured by your airport, you can just go in, you can go into the map and tick these boxes and you can clearly see what areas are being covered. And you can see the airports that are also nearby and these will mean that they share some of the demand with you. So it's important when you look between two cities, what airports are in your area and what airports are in the destination area. Because any of these cities here in my circle, if they start to fly it, that will start to take away some of the potential demand to those bases. So we come now to explaining how the demand levels work. Uh, if we just go to any route, let's go to Los Angeles, for example. Just I'm going to go and I tend to focus on long haul cargo so this is maybe not the best example but I'm going to do it anyway just to show there is a lot of demand between these two cities uh, as you can see half a million um, and quite a bit of it is flown not by me but that's that's to come at some point so set I'm mostly focused. So here on the first column we have potential demand. Um, this is the demand between the two cities. So it could be from New York, it could be from LaGuardia, it could be from Newark, but it could also be the destination airports nearby in LA. So LA has Long Beach, you know, it has a few airports that are within the capture area. And if someone starts to fly to those airports, all those airports have to add up to the potential demand once it's flown. Now the second bar here is the actual demand. So this actual demand is how much is you know really demand between those two airports. So this is the the, the real demand between JFK and LAX. Uh, now this can go up if you start to fly supply more and more, 
and nobody else is flying it on any of the other routes between that city. Now if you see this is higher, this is already supplied in total market. If this bar doesn't grow anymore, it's likely that there's being demand flown between other cities as well already. So they, they would add up. So you need to check all the potential routes between LA and New York to see where that demand is. Um, sometimes you will see at an airport the actual demand is zero and nothing is flown or very close to zero. It'll be like maybe 5,000, 10,000 in this case, very low. But you can trigger demand to go up by actually starting to fly it. You can trigger demand to come your way as long as the whole potential demand between any of the airport hasn't been flown yet. As soon as the demand has been established at once, um, leg or something like that, then it's very difficult to start switching the demand from one route to another. It would just simply not happen uh, or very, very gradually. And you would need people in the other airport to bankrupt or stop flying that route for the demand to start shifting, or you'd have to wait for the overall demand to go up. So that kind of explains what the difference between potential and actual is. If you can see actual is the same as potential, it's not going to move anywhere. It means that it's full everywhere and you can just fly it and uh, fill up the route as much as possible. Uh, so it's very important to understand the, the, the dynamics between this and how the, the demands can, can shift and can't shift as well. Um, and sometimes you'll get a warning, uh, especially on new routes to say, oh, you haven't, um, there's not enough demand here, but you want you need to check is like, is anybody else flying it yet? And it says no. Well, you know, over time, and it tends to, you'll see within a matter of weeks, you should see that actual demand starts to increase. Then you know that the demand is shifting. If you, after one or two months, you haven't seen the demand shift and you've been flying it for two months, then you know the demand isn't going to shift and you need to evaluate, well, I probably need to fly a different route because it's not going to work out for me. Um, what's also worth to know is uh, when we go back to uh, the radius of uh, an airport, um, let me go back um, to the radius. So I've shown you the, the graph uh, when you go to your airport page. Um, every airport has a radius on how big um, it captures the area around it and that, that determines the, the potential demand. Now some of it will overlap and you will see probably if we were to compare Newark and JFK, they will have similar demand profiles, potential demands to the same cities. Um, but this arc here, this, this radius will grow as the infrastructure level grows. So if my infrastructure level grows, this radius will grow. So potential demand will go up, but not necessarily actual demand because it could be that you're overlapping into other areas where people are flying as well. So you need to keep an eye on it when you're infrastructure grows your demand might grow but not necessarily the actual so it's 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 changing all the time and it's it's that's why it's called uh, dynamic so uh, you need to continuously focus on it um, so that's really an important factor to know um, another important factor to know about um, city-based demand and especially cargo is that the demand profile is not the same on each leg just to give you an example um, cargo let's say if we were to fly to um, Hong Kong um, I'm going to show you Asia I do fly to Hong Kong already um, with cargo I haven't done passengers yet I believe so it's loading see I'm not flying passengers yet probably I should but this is kind of a giveaway already you see the the demand is virtually zero potential demand to Hong Kong from New York but look at the amount of flights that are going there already in terms of cargo. This is a dead giveaway that the return leg is very lucrative. Um, so if I were to just close this, actually I'm going to show you what you can check just to see. I'm going to pretend I'm going to create a route. Come on, I press the button. does not take this long okay here we go so I'm um, for the sake of it I am NOT going to create text top I'm just gonna go it's just purely to show you how the demands can vary so I've already shown you the the outbound demand but if we were now to look at the return demand um, 
On passengers it will be very similar, but on cargo it's a whole different ball game. As you can see, you know, we're talking hundreds and thousands of tons here of cargo. So it's always worth checking both ways if there's demand and you know the loss that you'll be running on your flight there is more than offset by the profits that you're going to be making. So just to give you an example, I've just started um a seven four seven eight hundred freighter. Uh, this is my first one. I only scheduled it over a week ago in the game world. So the load factors are still relatively low, but it's going to be my most profitable aircraft by, by all means. As you can see, my outbound here is losing 100k, but my inbound is making 750k, and this, this number is only going to increase as my load factors increase. So, yes, it is definitely worthwhile to operate a loss one way, but then to make the money on the, the inbound leg. So, always check the two way demand um, for us. Uh, other things that are important to, to kind of know is when it comes to scheduling you have a lot more flexibility uh, in terms of your scheduling for um, cargo airplanes than you do versus your passenger airplanes. So you don't have the, the restrictions on what time you should be flying, so you don't have to stick to the 5 to midnight rule or the 6 a.m. to, to 2300 hours to be optimized. You can fly in the middle of the night, you know, cargo doesn't care, you know, it's, it's, you can take off land whenever you want as long as, you know, there's no curfews at the airport. Another thing is like um, you have no restrictions on tech stops. You can you know do a one stop over or two stop over. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know as long as the cargo gets there, it will not penalize you. Um, you can also schedule your flights to to leave close to each other, so you don't have to keep the the hour spacing or half an hour spacing between your um, departures. And um, the thing that does still matter though. Is frequency so the more often you fly you know the better it is so you will you know the parcels get delivered more frequently frequently so that's kind of the theory behind it so it's still important to fly uh, frequency uh, keep that in mind because that does does have a factor so you will see different game worlds have different profiles when it comes to um, demand levels for cargo so if you start from a an early age game or a late game you know the demand profile is completely different you'll find in the early games uh, only a few uh, countries will have uh, heavy cargo and usually it's not established or worth it in the first few years um, those uh, those places tend to be japan uh, usa and a few countries in europe that will have some heavy cargo demand but typically it's not worth it for the first few years to fly um, but then you'll see over time you will have like places like Hong Kong which will start to develop huge amounts of cargo in the mid 90s and then China eventually in 2000 South Korea the, you know, the demand explodes over there so it's a, it's worth to keep keep an eye on on the profile of the demand so it's it's as i said it's it's the most profitable thing that you can have in airway sim just to give you an overview on my situation right now my airline um my most profitable aircrafts are still the A330 200s, but that's because the 747 800 freighter that I've just scheduled hasn't done a full week yet. Uh, and if we were to go into my aircrafts and actually check the 747, how it's doing in terms of profit, um, we'll see. I've only got one, so it shouldn't take too long to find it. I've got more on order. And the reason why I went for the 747 800 is because it's only marginally more expensive to own versus the A330 200, but it carries almost double the cargo. So, and I have the demand from New York. It's got big cargo routes, so I'm going after getting that cargo as soon as possible. So as you can see, here, it's already at 3.4 million expected uh, profits, and this was this will only rise because the demand here hasn't fully established yet so there is some actual demand yet but because I'm now oversupplying it uh, versus the actual demand because this is a big aircraft it'll take some time for that actual demand to become established and I, sh I expect these load factors to start creeping up gradually which will obviously have an impact on my profitability so Next, I'm just going to give you five tips when it comes to planning uh, for cargo. What you should take into consideration is um, really think about your aircraft types again. This, you know, this is common throughout with passengers, but think about aircrafts that have the commonality with your passengers. So when you start thinking of passenger aircrafts, also think ahead of like, can I convert them into cargo later? Uh, are these good cargo aircrafts to have? You know, does this fit my profile for demand? Um, so think about that. It's it's a it's it can save you a lot of costs. You 
typically don't want to have a dedicated freighter unless you you only have um, two fleet types for your passengers and maybe one for for cargo which is what i'm doing in uh in this game world but typically try and have a commonality if possible um also one the second tip is to start flying your passengers first to build that route image and then you can follow up with cargo so if you have um, demands on routes so you have some heavy cargo demand routes and you want to start flying them um, maybe it's worth to start seeing if they've got passengers start flying the passenger route first get that demand that route image up and then as soon as the route image hits around 80 start following up with cargo aircraft and start you know milking that cash from that route um, you'll see Passenger aircrafts will also carry some uh, cargo. They're typically the, the light and the standard. Um, you know, that's not the focus uh, uh, for this purpose, but I, I would typically still not really focus on that from the passenger aircraft. It's kind of a nice added bonus in terms of um, profit for those uh, planes, but I tend to focus on the cargo aircrafts. Um, they will also carry standard and light uh, variants, but I really focus on taking that heavy cargo onto my uh, my planes and typically the configuration I have is 30 30 40 but it depends on the route so my planes tend to have 30 my cargo planes tend to have 30 percent um, light cargo um, 30 percent standard cargo and 40 percent heavy cargo and that kind of gives me a good 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 overview and good um, you know profit really um, the third one that I would say, the third point is to focus establishing the demands to your base. So, you know, making that potential demand turn into actual quite early on if you have a lot of other airports nearby. Uh, because if it's gone to another airport nearby, it, you're not going to bring it back to your airport. So if you're like in a place like London, L.A., um, you know, Chicago even, or uh, New York, those kind of places, they have all cities nearby. That demand can be dragged away from from your airport to another airport so those are the kind of places you want to make sure that you you get in there early and get that demand established and actualized now for if it's possible in your era um, and you'll see these aircraft come uh, later in the game uh, is, to, is to go for a uh, combi aircraft so those are aircrafts that have um, passengers and uh, the capability to fly heavy cargo so these combi aircrafts that have that are only the very large aircraft types like an MD-11 for example they will have the, com uh, the combi um, capability and, and those are those are those can be very lucrative because it prevents it doesn't it kind of serves two purposes so you're still flying passengers but you can then also set it just to f purely carry heavy cargo so you you're you're kind of killing you know two birds with one stone and you don't have to set up a separate aircraft to fly that route as well just to get the um, the cargo so they are very very good aircraft to go for in this game and um, the final tip is um, especially in long game modes you'll see people who fly passenger aircraft they tend to ditch them after the before the second or the third D check and um, if those aircrafts can be converted into cargo aircraft so I'm thinking like a 757 for example or a 727 200 early in the game world you want to probably buy those aircrafts very cheaply from the used market and it doesn't matter if a D-check is due because when you convert um, a passenger aircraft into a cargo aircraft um, it does the D-check for you and it takes the same t amount of time plus some addition t sometimes but it's, uh, it's it just saves you a lot of money you get a cheap aircraft and um, you know the payback period is in it's insane really you get really a good return on investment and you can grow really rapidly in cargo this way and get the old aircraft yes you have a higher maintenance cost but they are so lucrative and it's cheap to acquire them you can you can fly these aircraft till you know till they're 30 35 years old and then you have to replace them because the game doesn't allow you to fly aircraft older than 35 years old but you know a lot of people tend to ditch passenger aircraft but they don't think about the capability of converting them into um, cargo aircraft and that's you know one of the things that I have in especially in the longer game modes it's one of the things where you can quickly grow your cargo operation quite fast and relatively at low cost so those were really you know, a quick overview in terms of cargo as I said it's very lucrative it's the thing to go for in most game worlds um, if you got any questions or you want me to cover any other topics, just leave a comment below. 
Um, also, if you like this video, it'd be great. And you know, if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of the future videos, because I plan a few more, more on Airway Sim, just subscribe, hit that bell. And um, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Thanks.